we have one more story to round off this first half, and then I believe there may be nibbles available at the back, and we'll take a short break. But before then, once more, your ears will be tantalised and delighted by... He's one of my favourite people, because he's so prolifically active at organising things. And, and that leads into a bit of a trade secret here. As storytellers go, we're not by nature very organised people. <laughs> he's an exception that catalyses events like this taking place. Would you please put your hands together for Joe White! <laughs> There was once a hospital, and in one of the rooms of this hospital, there lay two men. Two old men who were predicted to live out the rest of their lives on those beds. And the men had nothing better to do, so they talked every day. They talked about their service in the army, they talked about their other jobs, they talked about their families and the families that they had lost, and their parents and their childhood, and all of the good things that you remember when you're about to go to that other place. But for one hour, every afternoon, the man who was by the window, for there was only one window in this room, had to be raised slightly to let the fluid drain from his lungs. And so he had perfect vision out of that window. And because the other man had to lay flat on his back the whole time, he asked what the other man could see, for he'd forgotten what was outside. And the man would describe the most beautiful park with a fountain, children playing, and parents watching and teaching their children how to ride bikes and pushing them on swings and feeding the ducks and everything good that a child will do when a parent can watch over. And the man in the bed, far away from the window, enjoyed these hours, but he felt he was connected to outside. He felt his life was worth living for. But after a few months, he started to grow jealous of the other man. Because he wanted to look out of that window. Why should he not be able to? Couldn't he just have that bed at some point? But he thought it was best not to say anything. Because after all, they'd grown to be quite good friends. And he didn't want to seem rude or seem that he didn't want to be friends anymore. But then one morning he awoke to see that the bed next to him was empty. And when the nurse came in to clean the man, he asked what had happened. And he was told that during the night, the other man had passed away and his body had been taken to the morgue. And the man was quite upset, he'd grown to like this gentleman. But after a few days he felt it was okay to ask if he could move to that bed. And well, the matron had no problem with it. And she had to move over. And when she'd gone, because he knew he wasn't meant to lift himself, he put all the force he could to lift just slightly up so he could see out of that window. And as he just got high enough to look out, he saw a brick wall. And he was puzzled. The man had lied to him this whole time. And when the matron came back in, he asked why a man would lie to him. And he was told that the man was indeed blind. And he was only probably saying it to cheer up the man who was on the same deathbed as he was. And, well, the matron just concluded by saying, surely it'd be nice that if everyone went up to someone and made their day a little bit brighter, even just for a couple of minutes the world would be a better place. Before we break the snacks, I want to welcome back to the stage all of the tellers you've told in the first half. You can have more, but first, give it up. Come on.